Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday morning here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. What in the world are you doing this Tuesday morning? My goodness, it's gorgeous outside. Looking out here across our uh, our backyard, out into the back pasture, and we've already had the cows roaming around on two or three rounds this morning. So, uh, man, all is all is good here in the Delta, but it looks like it's going to be another hot one here. Uh, I'm not real sure what the forecast is. Miss Denise, what's the forecast supposed to be today? Hot, hot, H-A-W-T, hot. It is going to be hot here in the Delta. But, you know, for those of us, if you're like me, you always got yard work to do. And so uh, I want to encourage you to whatever you do, be careful when uh, you get outside. I know later this afternoon I've got to do that. I've got some raking to do because if I don't, it looks like hayfield. So uh, that is uh, that is going to be my uh, my agenda this uh, this this afternoon um, before Brother Larry's uh, Zoom class tonight. Tonight is Zoom, and uh, uh, we are uh, going to be able to uh, hang out with Brother Larry for a while tonight, and uh, he is in Proverbs, and holy cow, that is some good stuff. But uh, that is tonight at 7 o'clock, and my internet just went out on my computer, so I am going to... Uh, uh, punch a couple buttons and blow a couple whistles and uh, get this thing rocking and rolling right fast. It won't take long. It just needs a swift kick in the pants every now and then. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, just a good old-fashioned swift kick in the britches. And uh, that is exactly where we are right now. We've just got to get that thing going. And uh, just like that, it comes up. Uh, I have real quirky internet, to be honest with you, um, about... A couple times a day, uh, a good couple times a day, uh, the internet will go out on my computer. It, it just won't, it won't pick it up. It won't pick up the Wi-Fi signal. And uh, uh, for somebody who really, you know, you know, lives and dies on the internet like I do, it is just a, a nightmare. It, it aggravates me to no end. Those are little pet peeves of mine. Um, so that uh, that is where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. Uh, looky here, looky here. Uh, good morning, Brian Ponder. Good morning, Miss Denny. So so good to see y'all in this morning. Hey, when you get in and get on, say good morning. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. There is a quick share button. I'm gonna do that right fast. I'm gonna send it over to our group this morning and wake everybody up in the group. So uh, uh, we can say howdy to those sweet folks over there. And then I want to post it to my timeline. And that's what I want you to do right now. And that's hit the share button and put it on your timeline. Miss Denise, Miss uh, Denny's asking, are you getting stronger? Are you seeing that? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so uh, she is here beside me this morning. And uh, uh, it is so good to have that. Uh, so good to see uh, uh, her beginning to get up and about and doing this. There's Miss Jessie. Good morning, Miss Jessie. How are you doing, sweetie? How are you and that new pup of yours? How's that new baby boy dog doing? Uh, I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that uh, everybody is uh, getting in, getting around, getting all their good stuff up. Uh, who all is here? Who all is with me? Uh, if, if you're here, like I said, if you're here this morning and you have not uh, go ahead and say good morning. Go ahead and do that and hang out in my kitchen with me. And uh, uh, we're just going to visit for uh, just a few minutes this morning. Uh, make sure you hit that share button. It looks like Miss Denny's already done it. Who else has done it? I've done it. Uh, boom shakalaka. That's right. Go ahead and hit that share button. Mm, yep. Go ahead and hit it. That's all we need to do. Share the gospel. Hit the share a button hit the share button so what's everybody doing this week what's uh what uh what is your plans for the week anything going on uh, are you going to uh, do anything special anything uh, exciting there's really not a whole lot to do right now it's just too blessed hot uh i know i was talking to gloria yesterday and she said that her and sydney were wanting to do something this week but just really not sure because there's man it's just hot uh now denise was telling me sometimes was it Thursday you said we might have storms? Thursday, there's a chance of storms, but you know who knows? It's Arkansas. Um, I, I am thankful that the humidity has been down a couple days. Over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you just step out of your house and the humidity would just suck the air right out of you. And so I'm, I was very, very glad to see uh, that humidity come down on Monday morning. And, and today I've already been out and it, uh, it appears as though it's a little bit down today too. So that's a good thing. 
Uh, that is a good thing. Uh, Jesse says she's got to go to the doctor in Jonesboro. Okay, well, you be careful. Okay, going out and about, especially in that crazy traffic in Jonesboro. Those, uh, those uh, lovely individuals up there have yet to figure out how to drive, and so uh, you be careful up there. Uh, lots of road construction in the Jonesboro area, uh, Miss Jesse, so just as a heads up uh, going in. Uh, let me see here. Uh, real, 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 real quick announcements just to uh, yeah, make sure I don't forget them. And that is that uh, uh, tonight we are at Zoom, uh, at, uh, Sunday School with Brother Larry in the Zoom room tonight. If you can't make it into the Zoom room but still want to hang out, we'll be broadcasting live right here. Live and loud on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock. We hope you can join us. You will be a bit delayed, but your uh, comments and uh, questions will always get back into the Zoom room, and we will always have so much fun doing it. Brother Larry does a powerful job, and I look forward to it. That is tonight at 7 o'clock. Invitations will go out between 10 and a quarter till 7, and uh, make sure you get in, get uh, get up and run, and grab a cup of coffee, grab your Bible and your notebook, because Proverbs, Proverbs, here we come. That's tonight, tomorrow. Uh, night at 6 30 we're back to wednesday night live and uh, we are are really going to take a deep dive uh into the blueprint of the tabernacle now if you've never studied this uh you're really really going to be uh kind of blown away because there is just some elaborate designs that God gives Moses for the building of the tabernacle. Every, every time I study it, I am just more amazed and more amazed. And so that is tomorrow night at 6.30. Then on Thursday, on Thursday, we are having a, uh, a, a kind of a, a break, if you will, miss uh, Pat is taking two weeks off on her uh, Thursday morning Sunday school class because she is helping her granddaughter get ready for a wedding. And so uh, the, this Thursday and next Thursday, she will not be uh, online and we will we'll return. Can you talk? We will return on Thursday the 30th, I believe that's the day. Right. That's the 30th. So that is when Miss Pat returns, and uh, I believe she is going to be teaching on the power of purpose uh, is what she's going to be returning with. Also, uh, on Thursday nights, we have been having our outdoor Bible study with Brother Johnny, and uh, in conversations with Brother Johnny, we just feel that uh, that it is just uh, entirely too hot to, to do that and to continue that. And so we are going to uh, kind, kind of throw the brakes on that right now just, uh, just because of the heat. And uh, we do not want anybody to be uncomfortable, to be miserable, uh, and sitting outside uh, there uh, on the church campus. And so we will not be doing anything uh, with Miss Pat on Thursday, or we will not be doing anything with uh, uh, Brother Johnny on Thursday nights for a little while. We would definitely want to get it cooler. So that's that's kind of what we look like. And then uh, you are stuck with me Monday through Friday, right here in the mornings, live and loud, just uh, with some coffee chat time. And I'm so thankful that you were here and to get to hang out to me. Man, we start a brand new book today. We start First Timothy, and and uh, I'm excited to dive into that. There were some great suggestions that come through, uh, and I mean some really great suggestions. I saw the Book of Acts. I saw Daniel. I saw Revelation. I saw, and those are those are just. Uh, uh, big honking meat and potatoes kind of books. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, those are just the kind that you can't do justice in, you know, the short amount of time that we do in the mornings. And so I just did not want to do a disservice to those books. And so uh, I wanted to get into these uh, pastoral epistles uh, with Paul. And, uh, and again, I'm going to say more about that here in just a minute, but uh, that is where we're going to be. And I believe, let's see. Uh, my calendar's back there. Uh, First Timothy will go for about two and a half weeks, uh, and then we will go on into Second Timothy, and uh, then most probably we will do the book of Titus. We will do those three back to back to back. First to Second Timothy and the book of Titus, and what those are is those are three letters that Paul wrote, two of those to Timothy, one to Titus, uh, in the pastoral role. And it talks about a church structure. It talks about uh, church leadership. It talks about uh, qualifications of leaders uh, in in uh, in the church. And, and it, it's just good stuff. I mean, it is deep stuff, and we really need to make sure that we know that. I mean, we need to understand exactly why we do what we do uh, in our church. And of course we are a Southern Baptist church. 
and uh, everything that we do aligns with that scripture uh, as far as the qualifications of a pastor, of a deacon, uh, you know, the overseer, the shepherd, so on and so forth. And so we, uh, we really want to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page. We understand that we know why we do what we do. Uh, but that is, uh, that is this coming week. That's the broadcast schedule. I've got to update that on, uh, on our page. Uh, so that uh, everybody knows exactly what we're doing when we're doing it uh, on our Facebook page, or excuse me, on our uh, on our website. We want to encourage you that if you know someone who's been watching with us online, whether it be here, you know, during the day, or uh, or even on on Sundays or Wednesday nights, there's a there's an online guest card, and we really want to make sure that our friends fill out those online guest cards so that we have a record of their attendance. And so I would really encourage you to encourage them to make sure that uh, they fill out that guest card. Also, uh, we now have the capabilities of online giving for those of us who are a part of the Ridgewood family or for anyone who uh, is watching and uh, can't make our services. They live out of town, live out of state, and they would like to give financially to the ministry here at Ridgewood. They can go to the website, that's lovemyrbc.com, and click on online giving, and we want to strongly encourage that. Uh, also, uh, two things I'm asking folks to do. One is to go to our YouTube site and to subscribe. We're wanting to increase our subscriber count, and we want to also increase our uh, number of likes here on this page. Uh, we picked up, I think, three yesterday, and so that, that's very good. And all you have to do is share this page. Uh, not so much this post, we want you to do that also, but to share this page and to encourage your friends on your Facebook wall to come alongside of us and like this page. And, and all that does is it just increases our opportunity to share the gospel here in the Delta and beyond. So uh, if you would do that uh, at, right under the, the heading of this page, whether it be on your phone or on your computer, you have an option of inviting or sharing or so on and so forth to like this Ridgewood page. And, and I, I really want to encourage you to do that. The more we can do that, the greater our our ministry reach is going to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, as we look into tomorrow night, uh, if you have prayer requests that uh, uh, you have that you'd like to make sure you get to us, make sure that you get those to me uh, so that we can uh, get those listed uh, tomorrow night for our Bible study. And also just good news. I mean, if you got something good that's going on that God has blessed you with and you want to share it, we want to share it with you. And so please, please be sure that you get that information to us. Okay, let me grab some coffee real quick. And we're headed over to the first chapter in the book of Timothy. Now, have you ever read Timothy? Have you ever taken the opportunity to read this? Uh, the thing that I want to uh, to really kind of set apart here is that, uh, uh, as, as I've already said, these are these are pastoral epistles that uh, that Paul wrote Timothy. The thing I want us to understand here before we go any further is that we need to understand the location of Timothy. Where is he at? What church? is he serving at when Paul writes this letter? And this is where it gets fun at, okay? Um, he is at the church at Ephesus. Uh, so let's let's understand this, that, that Paul writes to Timothy, okay? Uh, two letters while he is serving at the church at Ephesus. Paul writes to the church itself at Ephesus. That's why we have the book of Ephesians. And then uh, I also find it very ironic that Jesus addresses the church at Ephesus in the book of Revelation. So there's just so much going on in that church that we, we have to understand the dynamics as to what's where, who's where, and uh, or really you know, what's taking place. And uh, if, if you want to know more about what Timothy's dealing with inside the church, go back and read the book of Ephesians. It, it, it is so powerful. It sets the stage. You understand exactly as a pastor, uh, as a church leader, what he's dealing with. And this is an encouragement to the, the you know, to the, to the main uh, leadership there in this church, exactly how to do things and why to do things. So uh, this is where we are. Uh, it's written by Paul. It is written to it is written to this uh, th this young pastor. It talks about leadership qualifications. It talks about responsibilities. Uh, he addresses the need for sound doctrine and also for uh, a life of godliness. And these are just reoccurring themes 
that we're going to see all throughout this book. And we really, really got to uh, got to understand this. We, we feel as though the date that this thing was written, that it was written sometime after uh, we have the book of Acts. Okay, sometime after the book of Acts, Paul was released from prison. He was in Rome. Um, we, we know that Paul, when he's writing to Timothy, Timothy had been a very close associate of his, okay, a very close person in his second missionary journey, all right? And we find that, we document that in Acts chapter 16, first three verses. And so uh, this is kind of, uh, this is kind of the, the background to it. This is kind of what we are uh, looking into. Uh, Paul left Timothy in Ephesus as, uh, as the, the leader, as the pastor, if you will, to deal with with the the problems that are in in this church and one of the primary problems here is false doctrine uh if you remember when uh when i was back teaching through ephesians on sunday evenings what you you find is that the the whole town was just laced with uh with idol worship and uh it was beginning to work its way and weave its way into the church into where it wasn't so much a blatant change from sound doctrine to false doctrine but it was a combining of the two and and you see here's the thing it's either you know, straight up doctrine or it's false doctrine. I mean, there, there is no, there, there is no weaving in between. You can't combine the two. It's either right, solid, or it's wrong. And, and that's really where, uh, where Paul is. And he's just basically going to tell Timothy, look, dude, you've got to get a handle on this because this is infiltrating the church and it's going to hurt you from the top down. And so this is kind of the basis. This is the background as to what Paul is saying to this young preacher boy. That's there at the church. And so let's let's go ahead and start in. Uh, obviously, the first couple of verses is going to be the salutations. It's the greetings. It's coming in. And so here we go. This is chapter 1, verse 1 of uh, the book of 1 Timothy. Paul writes this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace, from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I love how he addresses Timothy as what? A true son. A true son. Now, does that mean that, that Paul led Timothy, Timothy to Christ? Possibly so. Uh, we, and we need to understand that. We do know that they were partners in ministry and that he, he viewed Timothy as a son, okay? Almost like a uh, 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 a mentoree that he is bringing along with him that he's training. And so let's, let's understand this, uh, this, uh, this background. Good morning, Ms. Mary Ellen. Good to see you, sweet lady. I hope you had a good night and I hope you are fired up this morning to have a good day. Uh, we're in first Timothy chapter one this morning, Miss Mary. Okay. Let's keep reading. Uh, starting at verse three and Paul pulls no punches. He starts immediately out here about talking about having no other doctrine. Okay, let's go. Chapter, or excuse me, verse three. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Okay, let's look at that word charge. We actually get the word command here. Uh, and I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge or command some that they teach no other doctrine nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in the faith. If you are, are finding yourself in a situation to where you, uh, you are not receiving sound doctrine, and, and it, it veers from God's word, then, then that should raise red flags all the way around you. Uh, and when you see someone else wanting to teach that or to suggest that, no, 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 no. And this is where we have to know exactly what we're talking about with sound doctrine. Uh, I shared this back, uh, back a, a couple of months ago before the pandemic started about understanding what's real and understanding what is not real. And the example that I used is, is coming from the U.S. Treasury. 
uh, that we, we find that the National U.S. Treasury, and when they hire people, one of the first things they do is they have to understand the difference between what is an actual uh, uh, legal tender, a legal bill, a $1 bill, a $5 bill, 10, 20, so on and so forth, and that which is counterfeit, what is right, what is not right. And so uh, in order to teach the new people that go to work at the treasury, what they do is they, they put their new recruits uh, in a place and they give them the actual real denomination of money. They give them an actual $1 bill and a $5 bill, 10, 20, so on and so forth. And they tell them to study it, study it, know what it is, know that this Inside out, upside down, right to left, left to right. This is the right. This is the sound bill. This is not the fake. This is the right. And when questioned, why do you do that? Shouldn't we understand what is wrong? And they are told this, that when you know without question what is right, then everything that is wrong becomes clear. And so that's what we have to do with sound doctrine. We have to be so intimate in our word and, and understand what the doctrine is that, that we believe in so that when someone or something else wants to infiltrate it, then we can immediately say, mm -mm, not today, that's not gonna happen because that's not biblical, that's not scriptural. And this is where Paul is teaching and, and, and helping to encourage his young preacher boy. He says, uh, verse five, he says, now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. Uh, the, the word sincere here, we get the word unhypocritical. In other words, we do not want anything to where you say one thing and do something else. Okay, uh, from a sincere faith, from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. In other words, they really just don't understand what they're teaching because they're being persuaded from what the world is wanting to infiltrate. Verse eight, but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there's any other thing that is contrary or opposed to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now, folks, this is a letter. This is a, a, a written letter from one man to another who is in leadership in a church, and he does not play games. He comes out firing right out of the chute. In other words, I need you to understand something, that you have got to put a stop to the false doctrine that is infiltrating your church, and you need to teach the folks to understand what is uh, true doctrine and what is false doctrine. And this is the whole foundation and going to be one of the critical themes that we're going to find through these very few chapters in this book. Uh, I, thoughts, uh, comments as we, as we kind of, kind of, uh, you know, back away, that's going to be all of our reading for today. We'll pick up in verse 12 in the morning. But, uh, uh, again, if you, if you've never read the book of Ephesians, I really want to encourage you to do that. Uh, because you're going to understand exactly the ridiculousness that, that was going on in that church. And every time I read it, I'm just kind of baffled at each time that, that it was actually taking place. But then again, when you look around at our churches today, look at all the, the, the garbage that's, that's being infiltrated into our churches. And, uh, and that's why it is critical that we, the believer, understand what God is teaching is right and what God is teaching is wrong. And to be able to say, mm -mm, not today, Satan, you're just not going to have your way. We're not going to do that. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, spend some time in First Timothy. Really go back over this today uh, as our daily Bible reading and just uh, spend some time praying through it. Ask God, God, what is it that you're showing me? What is it that I need to understand? What do I need to know for sure is real? What do I need to, to be able to detect that is wrong, that is in my life now or that's coming into my life because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want to be blindsided by what Satan wants to do. Uh, I want to be very solid and very secure and very confident 
in my belief in you, God, and in your word. Folks, that is all I've got this this morning for this Tuesday uh, here in the Delta. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here in my kitchen. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget Zoom room tonight with Brother Larry. Uh, inv invites will go up between 10 to and uh, a quarter to seven tonight. And if you cannot join us or would choose not to join us inside the Zoom room but want to hang out here on Facebook Live with us, we want you to do that. Good morning, Annie Norman. Uh, good morning, precious lady. I hope you are having a blessed morning so far. Uh, tell somebody about Jesus today, okay? Do something. Put it on your Facebook. Text somebody. Call somebody. Write somebody a note or a letter. Do something today to encourage someone that needs a good, strong hand up. And if you do encounter somebody that God leads you to, tell them about this wonderful Savior that we have. Don't miss an opportunity. Hey, keep praying for Sunday as we continue in our series on Neighbor. It is a power-packed message series, and we've got two weeks left, and we don't want to miss anything that's coming out. Folks, that's all I've got this morning. Have a wonderful Tuesday. If you need anything, make sure that you give the, the, the office a call, and we will be glad to take care of it for you. I love you guys a whole bunch. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.